What you're about to watch is the last video that I made with my friend, Kevin Hunt. Sadly, he passed away five days after this video was shot. With the encouragement of his brother, I decided after many weeks to finally release this video. Kevin was very happy to make this video. Stick around to the end for more about our dear friend. All right, here we go. Kevin Hunt, the coin hunt, Indianapolis. How's it going, my man? Yeah, pretty good. How are you? Good hey, to see you. Good, good, good. Made a nice little trip down I-65. And mm -hmm. here we are in your shop. And uh, hey, uh, the place is looking great. Um, let's do a little show and tell. Uh, what do you have today? Yeah, yeah. Hey, man, this is a wild one. Take a look at this one, guys. Look at the color, the history. He uh, fought against the government when uh, you know the people who are working the land could, couldn't take any more. They got fed up. They revolted against the government and he was one that led the way. Ooh, I'll take a look at this one too. Uh, man, I, I'm doing all the talking here, Kevin, but I'll tell you what, Go ahead. you've got some good Mexican stuff here. And 1950s Southeastern, what's the history on this one, Kevin? Uh, it's for the opening of the um um, Southern Railroad, um, I think it went from like the Pacific side to the Atlantic side or the Gulf Coast side, um, in 1950 they completed it, so it was a one-year issue. Uh -huh. um, Very hard to find. Uh -huh. I've only seen a, f a few of these in all of my travels. Yeah, I think it's the Southeastern Railroad. Yeah, uh, Southeastern MS-64. I gotta ask, just out of curiosity, what does something like that run? Oh, uh, it's like 245. 245? That's not too crazy no. bad for something that is that rare. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then you had that buffalo. Let me get a little closer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, uh, I was telling Mrs. T that, like, even in beat up condition, these things, uh, no, A, they're, they're, they're really beautiful. I mean, that what an iconic image there and then but even in beat up condition they go for a pretty penny this one says 1600 kevin is that the price uh, you probably do like 1475 or something but okay yeah. all right well this one's here if anybody wants to come and visit my buddy and holy smokes you're pulling now all kinds of crazy stuff Colorado gold nugget. Did you pan this one yourself? Kevin? No, someone just came in and <laughs> they bought. He said he uh, got drunk and bought ten Volt Box Series fives. <laughs> oh gosh! Rich, rich guy with a little too much money and yeah, came and sold a whole bunch of Volt Box stuff. And uh -huh. apparently he didn't know you could sell it back to Volt Box yourself. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And I, you, you. Uh, so if anybody in the Indianapolis area. Uh, has uh, IU or Indiana stuff in general, um, I'm sure you would uh, appreciate a visit from them because I know you do love your Indiana stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, a matter of fact, Purdue, what do you think of Purdue's chances in the NCAA well, tournament? They did, they did better than they did in the tournament last year and against IU last year. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, I guess that's a improvement. But I don't think they're going to win it. I think it's going to be... Um, Houston or UConn. UConn yeah. yeah, um, I'm with you. I, I picked them to make it to the Elite Eight, but not beyond that, yeah. based on their history of uh, not doing so hot. But here is the old green holder, not to be confused with the Rattler. With this is like Generation 2.0, Kevin. Yeah, it's I'm three, the two. Had the rattler encased um, mm -hmm. around a, um, a plastic ring. That's a complete um, solid holder. So I think that's like the third generation. Okay, man, this is incredible. This tone, my goodness gracious! And you've got you know, blast white on this side. I wonder what happened in the history of this piece right here. Maybe. Put away in an envelope and then uh, ask yeah, an envelope or something like that. Either at the top of a roll or um, um, something along those lines, but mm -hmm. got the uh, 
2009 ultra high level relief, one ounce. Whoa. Uh, You're not messing around with this one either. That's a heck of a display case too. Yeah, it's probably, probably the coolest display case the men ever made. I think it's got the um, oops, let me find the the uh, magnet that holds it up. And, oh, um, that's pretty fancy. Yeah, uh, it's kind of cool. I mean, if you're gonna just get a one ounce of stack, why not just spend just a little more over melt and get something that's yeah. And uh, to speaking of melting, uh, these are some silver pours I saw you. Yeah, had I don't know. Some <laughs> some guy did these. Yeah, some famous uh, Hoosier uh, silver pour artist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a heck of a collection you have going there. Mm -hmm. And uh, more good stuff to come. I will tell you that. I don't want to give too many secrets away, but I've got some new designs that uh, no one's seen before that will be coming out in the very near future. Kind of cool. It's the first year they did the four coins. Uh, oh yeah, the, here's the ones, uh, the old Roman numerals on these, huh? Mm -hmm. Very cool. And... Oh, you get the, the old $10 Indian. Well, you got all kinds of uh, For, a, you know, the, the shop isn't, you know, the Walmart size or anything like that. I mean, it's not a huge, huge space, but you have a lot of cool stuff in here. Um, how do you acquire most of this, Kevin? Just wondering. Um, it's usually people just walk in, but you know, we got a one or two shows a month and just dealing dealer to dealer. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of it's just walk-ins. And, and oh, If you had to throw a percentage on it, what would you say is your percentage of walk-ins versus dealer to dealer versus coin shows? Um, probably like 60% walk-ins, 30% okay. dealer-to-dealer, and 10% online. Okay, got it. So. And uh, you are uh, one of the favorite participants, uh, speaking of online, and my uh, online auctions that I do. Yeah. And uh, I'll tell you what, there's another guy here. I don't think he wants to be on camera, uh, but would you like to say hello, Rick? <laughs> hello. <laughs> Uh, for those, <laughs> and that, that's, <laughs> that's Rick the Tick, guys. Uh, it was a pleasure to meet him in person. He says Ricky. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You've got a lot of nicknames, Rick. You're quite I the do. character I'm on a, there. <laughs> I don't know how I get them either. <laughs> well, Tooley Tooley was the first one to type out uh, your name incorrectly, and that's how Rick the Tick came about. But there's a typo that stuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Kevin, what else do you have, man? Uh, uh, you're like me. You like your vintage. Uh, you like your weird stuff and out of the ordinary. And I know some people, you know, they just stack to stack and to put on the weight. That's what we got. Well, this is a 10-ounce Chinese panda, or 12-ounce. 12-ounce panda. Holy smokes. That's a... What year is that? 1988. Oh, I know where you got that. <laughs> that's what I showed. 1988 is. Uh, everything's for sale. Yeah, that's that's a year that's significant to you. Yeah. That's a big old panda. Yeah, they actually made uh, 12 ounce gold versions that year too. 12 ounce gold versions? Mm -hmm. I think they go for like 34,000. Dang, that's wild. You know, that's the fun thing about coming to a coin shop. You, you really have no idea what you might uh, see when you uh, visit and you know what the dealer might have stashed away and you know that's why you go and you ask questions and you see cool stuff kind of cool eight ounce bar it's an odd size eight ounce bar mm -hmm. that case is perfect for it there look at that that's beautiful 1996 Yeah. That's wild. Silver certificate, five hundred dollars. Very cool. I think we got the Indiana Norfred. Um, I don't know if you've seen one of these. Oh yeah, the Norfed. Yeah. Oh yeah. And uh, rumor has it that that was his wife was the model for this. Yeah, yeah, and he uh, he got everything confiscated. It took years and years to get back. I don't yeah. think he got charged with anything. Um, yeah. All because he put a dollar denomination mm -hmm. on his uh, rounds that he made. Yeah, he eventually took them off. I think. I so hey, let me ask you this: as a collector and a coin shop owner, I mean, is it a tough balance? How much of 
what you have is for sale and how much of it is like personal collection yeah, that you I mean, wouldn't part with. But I mean, everything, has, everything has, a, has a price pretty much, unless it can't be replaced. I mean, this, this, the stuff that I keep is just like stuff that you can't can't ever replace. I'm okay. At the store, you can't keep stuff you buy over the counter. I mean, it's, it's yeah. got to be turned. And, yeah, you know. all the dealers I know tell me that's a real good way to go broke. Yeah, exactly. Just put everything yeah. back that you want to keep. Yeah. I'm having that same struggle myself. I do my auctions on the weekend, sure. but I put back quite a bit. But, I, I mean, at the same time, I mean, you're putting back wealth. So, I mean, yeah. if you do, if you're in a pinch, yeah. you can always sell it. You know, it's good savings. Yeah. So. All right, buddy. Well, you showed me a lot of cool stuff. You've got me kind of eager to maybe look around and maybe make yeah, a purchase can, or two can, and uh, yeah, yeah. Well, hey I appreciate the time my friend yeah no problem good to see you Thanks. special thank you to these channel members who support my efforts to bring you videos just like this one if you'd like to support the cause and become a channel member there's info in the video description and thank you for watching now let me show you my last purchases I made with my buddy Kevin and you know typical Kevin he kept some <laughs> pretty cool stuff for me and uh, was uh, very happy to show me these Libertads right here and uh, you know some of you have probably seen some of these items come and go on my auctions but I'll tell you what Kevin was always very good about uh, knowing the type of stuff that I like and uh, putting back a little bit for me and for that I am very grateful now uh, a little bit more about uh, Kevin, uh, what you're about to see here is a video clip that was prepared by his brother at a memorial service, and uh, his family was very, very proud of his uh, accomplishing his dream of owning his very own coin shop. This was something that he discussed with his father and his family members, and uh, you know that he put a lot of look at as you can see in these photos, put a lot of work and effort into making this shop his very own little slice of heaven here on earth. And he was so proud of this shop, uh, rightly so. Uh, he was uh, a great, great coin dealer and a, a good guy to get to know. So many of you got to know him and his sense of humor uh, via the chat in our weekly auctions. And uh, I'm very sad that we'll miss our, our dear friend. Uh, and Perhaps as more information becomes available about his passing, I'll share that. But for now, I simply say, rest in peace, Kevin.